Hi, my name is Ava Zanetti, and I am your consultant today. Uh, it's great to speak with you today, Umet, uh, on your company, EDU Nation. You have had some amazing uh, revenue in the past months. You have amazing projections. And today I'm going to talk to you about which option you should choose at the Venture Capital Fund, uh, links have to be specific, and uh, look at all your options, look at your deals, what you need to think of, and how you can expand your company as well. So course, I'm just going to quickly brief about EDU Nation. Um, you've had $300,000 in revenue in the first six months, which is amazing. Uh, looking at uh, the options that you have, you pay $16 per hour to uh, people that are the consultants, and then you ask for $20 an hour for the people that are getting the consulting. So you make about 4%, $4, sorry, um, in that transaction, looking uh, using that information to look in your past six months, you made about six sixty thousand dollars. You had a twenty thousand dollar debt um, at the software engineer who uh, created your website, so you made about forty thousand dollars, and now you are pretty much debt free. And of course, you are just going to keep making more and more money. So looking at this, your business is very promising and there is no surprise that Langstaff has really taken uh, a keen to your business and given you two different options. Um, and today I really wanna focus on those options, seeing what the best option for is for you and your business. The three main things I wanna talk to you about today is evaluating your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and threats, how to mitigate those threats um, at EDU Nation. I also want to second look at the significance of your term sheet. How are you going to use that term sheet and any additional factors you may need to consider when you are choosing? As well, um, I want to <clears throat> to I want to look at what extent you are following the blue ocean strategy and really seeing how you can follow that strategy even better um, <clears throat> than you have before. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, I want to talk to you about your strengths and your weaknesses, the opportunities and threats, and how we can mitigate those threats. Um, looking at your company, it is very, very promising, though you are in a very competitive market. Of course, the most notable one would be something like Kumon, as well as programs like Khan Academy and YouTube that don't have one-on-one -on -one consulting, but do that education factor in. You're technically in the education market. So there is tons and tons of businesses out there that do have that. Um, so when I'm looking at this, you do have some good points that is different from other people. Big strength of yours is how affordable it is. $20 an hour is very cheap. Um, so I think that is a great point about your business. As well, I think it's very nice about how much you pay people for, to be the consultant, especially since a lot of high school students are doing it. I think it's wonderful that you're paying them way more than minimum wage. It's minimum wage here in Ontario. Currently, for students, is 1340 So it's a great way for students to um, get paid some extra money while still being able to do their schoolwork on the side. So I think that is a great option. Um, though, of course your weaknesses is that you are in a very competitive market. Um, when we are looking at this market, of course, you're mainly in the education market. And when I'm looking at this, I really want you to expand not just from high school, but farther. Um, right now, you are offering science, math, and languages, so the core subjects, um, as well as English. I think that you can expand that even more so we can move into something like economics. You can go into the arts. Maybe you can move into AP and IB classes. And that's a way that you can kind of differentiate yourself a bit and move on. Um, when I'm looking at these different programs, especially Kumon, we see that they start from very young. So instead of going that way, I think you should go the opposite way. So instead of expanding your company towards little kids, I think you should expand it to university students. I think this would be a great way since university students are very busy people, but they do need consulting as well, right? This is a market people may not think about since they are adults now, but adults need help too. And as well, in university, it's a very different learning environment. Teachers aren't there anymore. Um, and professors who truly do not really care about your education as much as a teacher would. So I think adding to EDU Nation um, the aspect of moving on to university students, uh, we can start with undergraduates and move to graduate students, maybe even PhD students, you know, as far as you really want to go with it, I think would be a great way to differentiate yourself from programs like Kumon and programs like Khan Academy, where these things are also cheap and also free um, or free. Um, and I think this is a great way. And one-on-one -on -one consulting as well in university is very vital. And students don't get that as much. So I think that's a great way you can expand, um, as well as expanding your current uh, demographic of 
su subjects that you have that you are allowed to be consulting. I think that those two main points would be really good. You can start with adding more subject areas and then adding on to university because the market is already super crowded in the younger students. Um, I also think another strength of yours that I did not mention is how it is all virtual. This is great because students from all over the world can connect with EDU Nation, which I think is amazing. So I also really want you to focus on making it international. Of course, we're not going to go to that step right away, but keeping that in the back of your head because making this even further than it is is going to be amazing then you can get different people that speak different language to be the consultants and that will open a whole new market for you so i think those are some great things and those are different ways you can mitigate the already competitive market you are in the next uh part i want to talk to you today about is the significance of the term sheet and any other additional factors when considering what options you're choosing so the term sheet basically is going to be all your bullet points uh, describing the terms and conditions um, that you need when you are applying for either of the two options the venture capital has offered you. So Langstaff has offered you two options. One of those is 20% of the business for $100,000. Um, I'll talk about this one first. $100,000 is going to be a great way. The second option as well is $100,000. Um, the first strength about this is that you do not owe them anything. I think this is a great thing. Of course, you owe them part of your business, but you do not owe them any of that $100,000 technically back in cash to them. So that is a great um, <clears throat> strength of this. I think the main weakness comes with uh, if you already have part of your business um, that is not owned by you. So if you already had investors, I think that this option might not be as good because 20% of your business when you already have other investors that have part of your business is going to be a lot of chunk of your business. So I really think that you need to um, look at the logistics, see how much of your business that you own, and it might be a good option um, if you uh, don't do this this particular option if you don't own a lot in your business. The next option is $100,000 debt. 9% uh, payment in kind, and 3% equity stake. This one is great if you do not own a lot of your business. It is a $100,000 debt, but it's repayable in three years. Clearly with where you were going and clearly with investors, you're going to make a lot more money than that. You already are making a lot more money than that. So this debt should not be that big of a deal. Um, as well, you are not giving up a lot of your company. 3% equity stake is nothing uh, in comparison to how much money you'll be making. So this is a great option, truly. Personally, I would go with this one. But as again, I want you to look at all your external factors. Look at how much of the business you own. Look at how much money you're projected to make. Um, and look at how much uh, help they are also going to give you with the options that they have. Because of course, they are investors that are going to want you to make as much money as you can. Uh, so I definitely think the second option will probably be the best. But the first option may be a better option if you don't think you want to pay off that debt. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is what extent you're following the Blue Ocean strategy. So uh, in a Cliff's Note uh, description, the Blue Ocean strategy is pretty much um, a market for a product where there is no competition or very little competition. As I spoke before, you were in the education market and there is a lot of education programs out there. Even something like YouTube is very flooded with this. So what I really want you to be able to do is expand your um, your website, uh, EDU Nation, and I really want you to expand to university students, expand the current programs that you are offering, and this is going to help a lot. You have a competitive advantage with uh, how cheap you offer as well as how much you offer to the consultants. So consultants are making out good and the people that are getting the consulting is making out good. So I think that with these two things, you have an amazing business and clearly we've seen that with the revenue that you made. Um, but I wanna make sure that you keep expanding, don't stop here, and expand onto university students, um, and then eventually you can expand onto younger students, and this will be a great way to go onto the Blue Ocean strategy a bit more. You do have a bit of it going on right now, but it's not completely, and it is not optimized to what you could have. So overall, when you are consulting and going back to Langstaff, I want you to really think about how much of the business you own. I want you to think about if you wanna pay back a debt, and look at all your external options when you're making your term sheet. Make sure you don't leave anything out and make sure that you are still controlling your business because you know it best. You're the entrepreneur. You made the business. You know your business best. And I want to make sure when you're in your term sheet, make it as detailed as possible. If you need any help with that, 
come contact me again with the email that I sent you. I'm happy to help. And overall, I wish you luck on this adventure. Your business is amazing. And EUDU Nation is going to be even more amazing than it already is. Uh, contact me if you have any questions. And I hope you have a great day.